This, of course, uh, a coming uh, 24 hours apart, these two plea deals. But Weisselberg, when Trump assumed the presidency, he handed over control of his uh, assets and business to his two adult, adult sons and Weisselberg. This must be a serious blow for the president. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I think that, it, that you hear a lot of people now talking about the wall sort of closing in on the president right now as it pertains to this case. Again, you always have to remember that what's going on here in the, with the federal prosecutors in New York is very different from what is going on in Robert Mueller's office in Washington. So you have to always separate those two things. But you had David Pecker yesterday and you have Alan Weisselberg today. These are people with firsthand knowledge of the payoffs that were made, how the money got from the Trump organization to Michael Cohen in order for him to make those payoffs. These are things that prosecutors want to know. And in making deals with these two gentlemen, they're able to get access to a lot of that. Now, the presumption of truthfulness from both of them is what prosecutors are, are banking on here. And if they get that, then certainly it's something that they're going to push forward and see what else they can get out of Michael Cohen. I mean. Michael, you're joining us from a coffee shop in California. So tell us, what are the voters saying that you've been speaking to. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, Lauren, when you cover American elections, you find yourself in lots of coffee shops around the country. It's where small, uh, you know, small businesses, a lot of people in smaller towns gather and uh, they, they like talking politics. And what, what you find here is, of course, in a congressional election, which is what the midterm elections are, people are focused much more on what's going on in their district. But when you bring up the president, you bring up these challenges that he's facing, all of them have an opinion on it. I think. Uh, uh, what you're finding with Republicans is, is that they will buy into the allegations that this is a witch hunt by the president, but Democrats are fiercely uh, in, interested in what is going on because they don't think that there's a legitimacy uh, to the president. But people are, are, are seem to be confident in the job that Robert Mueller is doing, and that is not across the board, but almost across the board, a good majority of people, which is why candidates like the, in this district, Devin Nunes, who's running the head of chairman of the Intelligence Committee, why a candidate like Andrew Jans is challenging him, trying trying to get them to say that Robert Mueller is the right person for the job and he's doing honest work. And that is going to be something that Republicans are going to have to answer for, Lauren, for a little while, next few months at least. Michael, things in this administration move at a very dramatic speed, as we've seen uh, for the past year and certainly over uh, the weekend. But is there any way to tell at this point what kind of effect these new revelations might have on the midterm elections, if any at all? Well, I think a, a very profound impact in, in, in terms of the fact that yesterday, it's a, maybe a smaller story in Israel, but Tom Cole, a former U.S. Uh, Republican representative who was the chairman of the C campaign committee of the Republican Party, has said that he wants Republicans to start speaking out against the president in districts where the president is less popular, what we call Clinton districts, districts that Hillary Clinton won in 2016, even though they have a Republican representative. That fact alone means that they feel the pressure. The candidates now feel the pressure of these investigations into the president to the point where Republicans are even starting to say things like, well, where there's smoke, there's fire, as, as you heard John Katko in New York say yesterday. These things are very important. I'm